Today's sponsors are Angelo's Interiors, specialising in kitchens, bedrooms and bathrooms. Go and visit their showroom today in Gillingham. Their web address is angelosinteriors.com and De Medici Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on demediciassociates.com. Welcome to the Cheryl Podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. Generally, I'll, I'll sort of, you know, I'm up for it. Yeah, 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 I will, really. Because yeah. we all get naked halfway through. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I want that film. It might frighten people. <laughs> Did you all try not mention that? Is it Callum? Uh, yeah, Callum. Yeah, he's on holiday for the next couple of days. Bugger. <laughs> right, so what we ask you to do before we start is we, we ask you... Yeah, give a moony. <laughs> no, we ask you to get up and take the uh, clapper board, go in front of the camera, say who you are, give it a clap, come back, sit down. Okay, so... So we start it. Well, this one here? Yeah, that yeah, one, right, yeah. Okay. The only camera that's on right, here. So... <laughs> All right, I know yeah. you're used. To, I know you're used to loads of cameras. Don't start bragging. Right, so you just want me to that say one, your name and what you are. Kelly Tate, right? And then, and then just what do allow. Like, that's it. Right. Okay. Sorry. Female. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, tell me, just any time you want. Any time. Right. Kelly Tolhurst, Member of Parliament for Rochester and Strood. Perfect. <laughs> we'll put that back up there so everyone knows who you are. <laughs> That's my first question then. Right, well, there's another thing we do. We have a sign up there yeah. and it always falls off the wall. <laughs> and now we've made a thing of it from the very start. If you can time for and you clap your head say ten minutes from now, right. if it falls off the wall ten minutes from now and you're the nearest after the year, hundred pounds from us goes to a charity of your Oh very choice. good. Right, okay. You haven't hooked that up though. No, I haven't hooked it up. <laughs> No, right, so it. how, um, yeah, right, okay, so... Shall I get some information there? Is it new tape? It's new tape. Okay, new tape, so new double-sided <laughs> tape. Right, new tape. I'll give you an average, 25 minutes, 30 minutes usually, but you've got new double-sided, as you, you know, as your special, you've got new double-sided <laughs> tape. Um, you never guess it anyway, someone's two seconds mm, away. <laughs> someone's already two All seconds right. away. Oh, they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, 42 minutes. All right, Ooh. from now. Yeah. Right, okay, perfect. <laughs> right, Kelly, thank you for coming on the podcast. <laughs> Very weird having an MP with us. And um, sorry about the red curtains. <laughs> you, you don't come, oh, out, you don't come out in hives. Don't I'm come out in actually. hives or anything, do you? <laughs> no, so no. just so you know about this podcast, right, we just talk about people's lives yeah. and how you got to where you are today. Mm -hmm. Our one rule is we don't do political, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what should we do? We get an MP in. <laughs> So, um, you know, how did you become an MP? What did you do beforehand? Everything like that. Yeah. So, well, um, yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm sort of. I always say to people, I'm like an accidental MP um, because I never had, never ever in a million years would I ever have thought that I would have even tried to become a member of parliament let alone actually be sort of accepted as a parliament as, as a parliamentarian so as a candidate but basically um i had been running my own business in in rochester for about 17 years what was that so I um, am a marine surveyor by trade, so right, okay. I, and that, so surveying boats and also um, pr providing paints to boat builders, boat manufacturers. Right. Um, because I'm a daughter of a boat builder, okay. my dad um, has got a boat. Well, had a boat yard in in Rochester because I lost my dad a couple of years ago, oh, but. Right. Um, um, so yes, yeah, so, but prior to that, um, so I started the business in twenty uh, two thousand and two, and prior to that, I'd been working in the food industry. So I worked for New Zealand Lamb, I worked for a seafood company and a French dairy, oh, and right. I used to sell to the supermarkets. Oh right, okay. Um, but it, so it was a complete career change. But I'd always wanted to do something on my own, and I'd left school at sixteen, gone to college. Um, 
didn't really like that, went into work and basically... What my, did you study at college? So I, I first went into, uh, I, well, I joined a, a leisure and tourism course because right. at the time when I was, I mean, I don't know how old you guys are. I'm but, five years older than you. Right. <laughs> I'm about well, saying you're right. So when, when we were at school locally, you know, there were very sort of narrow, if you went to a comprehensive school locally, there were quite narrow opportunities for you. So it was either pushing you into leisure and tourism, travel and tourism, Business. <laughs> business. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, anyway, I, I didn't uh, last at that. Went straight out into work, and I fell into New Zealand farmers. And New Zealand farmers paid for me whilst I was working in London to basically do my postgraduate diploma. Right, okay. So I spent um, four years travelling um, to college twice a week. <clears throat> twice a week whilst working in London mm -hmm. for four years but they paid for me so it was like a mini apprenticeship I always yeah. say yeah. it wasn't an apprenticeship but yeah it, so you commuted to London yeah. so I commuted to London work similar came... to you at that age right? yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I did my um like degree and then whenever you used to have the you know the big summers and the big Christmases because they were different from yeah. universities you used to get like two three weeks off at Christmas yeah. half terms they used to sort of be like two or three weeks yeah. and I used to go and work in London with that's my mum yeah, yeah I loved it yeah I loved and, it up there. And that's right and it was great and you know it was really um so you know I I, you know, I loved that. I love sales. I obviously, my hobby was sailing. So I was, and, you know, coming from a, a sort of a family that sort of been on the river for mm. donkey's years and uh, I just wanted to do something on my own and the opportunity did. So, and, 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 and so that's what I've been doing. And I... I've always, I, I didn't come from a political family. Mum and dad were really engaged with current affairs. We were, we used to talk about politics, yeah. but we weren't political. No. Mm. Yeah. And um, what happened was where my dad's boatyard was in Rochester, um, the playing fields opposite the boatyard, the council decided to close the local school down right. and build on the playing fields. <clears throat> And all the local community were sort of against it. Mm. And, and I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, we've got five football fields that are really busy, really popular, really need them mm. in the Medway yeah. towns. So basically, I, I worked with the community, even though I was living over this side of the river, right. yeah, Strood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I worked with them and, and sort of fought the council on building on the playing fields. Mm. And then and, and, uh, a, a, one of the councillors at the time, a guy called Ted Baker, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Ted <laughs> Baker, who um, was, you know, a very sort of, you know, long standing councillor across across Rochester and Strood over the years came up to me and said you know Kelly actually you know we've, we'd quite like to have you with us rather than against oh. us and so that was the first time I'd ever thought about even thinking yeah, about joining yeah. a political party mm. so I joined the party uh, Conservative Party and then um, he basically ended up standing as a local councillor mm. which was fine because that was just really focused on my local local yeah, yeah. local yeah. issues um, and then I was quite happy with that. And then obviously we had um, the, the guy who was the MP at the time defected to another party, created a by-election. And someone said to me, you should go for that. I said, oh, they never had me. And, well, I ended up being and, the candidate. And, wow. you know, uh, the first time I, I heard of you, I was going, I was getting onto the, I was going up Strood past the, what's the Strood, what's that school with the, with the windmill? Oh, Strood Academy. Strood Academy. Strood Academy. Oh, I was yeah. getting onto the A2 and then there was a banner with your face That's on right. it. And that must have been about 2016. Yeah, something. yeah, right. that was near when we moved in. Yeah, because yeah, I, I'm, I was born been, yeah. in Northfleet. Rachel's oh, yeah. a chap. She was born over that way. Oh. <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, we got together and then we moved to Strood and we live up, um, sort of near, the recall road. Yeah, area. yeah, 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 Strood, yeah. Yeah, <coughs> North, it, not far from the Rochester Football. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Which is yeah. a bit weird, club. isn't it? Yeah, Rochester Football yeah. Club in Strood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, that was the first time we see you. And yeah. Strood, if I'm honest, Strood used to be a place you drove through to get to to Rochester. Yeah, that's why. And I used to be oh Strood. No, but I must admit we've been here since 2016. Mm, yeah, and it's a lovely little town actually. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm biased because I have grown up here so yeah. i i went to what was chapter school which was on cliff road yeah. oh, which yeah. then moved which became strood academy and i had one year at the strood academy site when it was 
still called Chapter. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're lucky in Strood and the surrounding areas because we've, I always think we've got the best of both worlds. We're really close to the town, Mm -hmm. but we've still got quite a lot of green space. Yeah. Yeah. And you can sort of, you feel Mm. semi-rural, particularly in places where, like, where you are. Yeah, Um, Yeah, we're back onto a field. That's what sold it to us. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we've got, you know, Strood's a, you know, Strood's, it's it's small in some respects, so yeah. you're close to everything. Mm. So I think we're really lucky and, you know, I've, I, I'm sadly, well, you know, I always say to people, a lot of my friends moved away, did go, gone to different places, but I'm one of the, you know, I've stayed yeah. where I've lived really. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 you know, apart from sort of small stints in else pl- in other places, mm. I, this is still my home. Exactly. Really. So yeah. I've been about, I've yeah. been Kings Hill and um, had low, but I've been about <laughs> <laughs> in, in more ways yeah. than one, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've travelled. I've tra- no. travelled. Yeah, travelled. <laughs> I've been about. Travelled around the M25. Yeah, yeah you know. basically. Yeah. But I always end up back in this sort of area. <laughs> within yeah. eight miles of where I was born for some yeah. reason but mm. it's, I think it's because it's just convenient you've got a bit of countryside mm-hmm. London's just out the road you can, right. you can watch a show in the hotel yeah if you get away just before the last song, <laughs> yeah. you're home in half hour. Yeah, right. you know what I mean, it's yeah. just perfect. Yeah. Oh no, and we and, and this is the thing around about the Medway towns anyway. And it's not until you start going to different places around the country that you do realise how much we've got. How blessed we are. And yeah. I know it sounds weird, but only recently have I I appreciated how, like you said, how green it is around oh, here. Yeah. I know we're going to say me then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. No. <laughs> um, but how green it is in Kent? I know they say like Kent is the Garden of England, but I used to just think, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But when you actually go to other places, you yeah. realise how much green space we actually have in yeah. here. Yeah. It's, it's Don't amazing. Say that. Stop building on it. <laughs> well, that's right. Um, you know, that there is that challenge. But but we do have, you know, we do have, we're close to London. We've got, you know, we've got access to dry ski slopes, swimming mm. pools, yeah. ice rinks, town mm. centres, um, you know, work. You know, one of the one of the things about the Medway area and in, in this area was that um we've always people have always come to the towns for work mm. because of our industries and you know the fact that we also had had a massive military presence mm. at one time mm. um across the sort of medway towns yep. um so yeah i mean and, and i've noticed when you go to other parts you think you just take it for granted so mm. you know whilst people will moan about certain things about this area we are used to. i yeah. think we're very mm. lucky yeah, mm. yeah. Because we did have a, a conversation the other day about the statue in Chatham, didn't we? And how mm. he's constantly got that cone on his head. And yeah. if he doesn't, it's like, oh, well, where's the cone gone? It's that's not, right. it's not normal right. now. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. Right. So um, you deal with Rochester and Strood. Yep. Neighbouring MPs. Yes. So what would that be, Chatham and... So you've got Chatham and Aylesford okay. and then Gillingham and Raynham. That's, are they all conservative? At the moment they are, yep. So, so have you ever been in a situation where you've... We've been beside someone that's not with this been like uh, Labour or something like that. And how would you liaise with them? Do you li- liaise with them anyway? Yeah, you do. So in Parliament, so from a like a local mm. perspective, you know, you're you know, there's only one per constituency. Yeah. So you sort of do your thing in your yeah. constituency. But in Parliament, actually, um, and what the media don't always show. What is, surprise, yeah. Yeah. So people sh- think PMQs and the sort of um I don't know what do you want to the, the shouting, the aggression yeah, yeah, yeah. is is that's all how they want to show. That's yeah, all they want yeah. to show. Yeah, yeah. how yeah. Parliament is, but actually that's not the case. Yeah. If it was like that, it wouldn't really function all mm. the time. No, if you go on, if you go on the Parliament Channel when there's nothing happening, <coughs> there's about five of you in there asking genuine questions yeah. and getting genuine answers. Absolutely, you know. and 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 also I think you know yes, there's political differences, but also. You do, you know, the best way of getting something agreed is by working cross party. So, you know, you sit on select committee. So at the moment, I'm sitting on the Northern Ireland Select Committee. Right. Okay. So there's like three Conservatives, there's um, an SDLP from mm. Northern Ireland, the DUP, Labour, um, and you work together. And mm. quite often, there's you know, you come to a conclusion together yeah. for your reports. And if you've got a particular campaign, in the House of Commons, you do want to get opposition support. So your go-to sort of MP colleagues um, who who are from the other parties and say, oh, will you sign up for this? Will Mm. you back my campaign? And quite often... There is a lot of cross party, yeah. uh, cross party working, and you know there's some people within 
the Labour Party, who you know I have immense respect for and who I regard as pals. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so they try and sort of show that everyone's at each other all yeah. the time, but it's it's, it's which not then, quite like that. Then in turn, the people watching that are at each other. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it makes it's a conservative right? person yeah. person yeah. be at a Labour person yeah, because they right. don't see the uh, you know. The, Coalition every now and then. That's you know. right. So going back to obviously. God, I used a big word, coalition. Yeah. <laughs> God, I just got to get over that. <laughs> well. Going back to friendship, do you have friends that are <clears throat> of the other parties that you have to sort of say, when you come around to my house, no politics, you know, we are actually yeah, friends. Yeah, do you switch off? Do you... So I've, so look, I am who, I, you know, I am who I am. I'm a conservative. That's who I am. Mm. But if you want to be whatever you are, whoever you are, that's fine. Mm. I'm never really going to get into a to a to a debate, debate. or I'm never going to make it a problem because politics, views, um, values, it, it's all personal to yeah. everyone. Um, you know, I'm sort of being upfront about mine, but you know, I'm not going to. I don't. I, I would never. Someone, yeah. I mean, I've got friends. I mean, one of the biggest compliments I've ever had, and. Uh, and I, I'll tell her I've said this today. I'll show her this pocket. <laughs> so um, my friend, who I've known for a long time, is, you know, ve- a real staunch uh, Labour supporter. And um, we um, we had uh, um, a, a conversation once. And my friend, who I'm very incredibly proud of her, she's a PhD student from Cambridge. And she knows who she is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and uh, she's very successful. And we had a debate one evening, and she said to me, "Oh, I don't like talking to you. You mess with my head." <laughs> and and uh, and and I just and I took that as quite a, a compliment. Yeah. Because I'm not uh, a Cambridge educated. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I took that as a, well. That's great. That. But no, I mean that's the th- you know ultimately politics is personal. Mm. And, you know, whatever political persuasion you are, despite what the media say, actually most of us are good people. Hmm. You know, we're all trying to, we've, we've decided on public service. Hmm. Um, we put ourselves, we're putting our heads above the parapet on things sometimes. Yeah. And actually everyone is working for the betterment of the country or their area. Yeah. Whatever political party yeah. you're in. Yeah. Their mindset is they want the best. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I... I was thinking about what I was going to say next, but it didn't come out. I was going to say, I've swung in the past. <laughs> we but, don't want to know about that. <laughs> but what but I'm trying to say, to me, I'm say is it's all coming out yeah. today, isn't it? What I'm trying to say is I'm not going to say what party I'm, I'm with because it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've swung from party to party. Yeah. And personally, I feel that's a healthy way to be because you are able to be convinced otherwise. Mm. See where I'm coming yeah, from? Absolutely. Um, do you agree with that? Do you agree with the fact, you, you know, I know you've got to stay as conservative. But this hopefully has not gone into politics. It's quite <laughs> no, no, no. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, surely it's far better to be someone like me, you know, handsome yeah. and a swing voter. <laughs> no, a swing voter. I'm running because I've added a joke now. I've messed myself up. <laughs> surely it's more healthy to be someone that's easily convinced than someone that's just fixed on a party regardless of if they're performing well in their eyes or not do you see where i'm coming from yeah yeah but again it goes back to what i said about it's being so personal mm. yeah you know there would be a number of reasons why you would choose to support one political party or another whether it be at election time or for the whole of your life you know and your experiences and you know upbringings and the influences around you will have a major impact Impact on whether you are a staunch, hmm. yeah. you know, lifelong supporter of one yeah. party, or whether you are a, a, a swing voter, and um, you know, so it is. So I think, as with all things, you know, having that, um, you know, difference is you know, really, you know, we're all we're all. Di- I know it sounds sort of like yeah. a rather sort of bland response, hmm. but it's sort of. You know, everyone's different. So I think, you know, and there are so many reasons why people will make a decision on on a lot of things. You know, it could be very specific. Yeah. People will could make a political decision based on something that might not necessarily affect them. Yeah. But then others will be completely focused on what it is exactly yeah, affects, affects them, them directly. Yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, a lot of it's decided on what they've been told. 
through the media. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the, you know, the media is really, um, really and powerful control. and <laughs> control. And, yeah. and, 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 and that's why, you know, it's incumbent on us as politicians to do our best to get that, get our messages out. But, you know, unfortunately, and I, and I do think it's sad. I mean, I always respected um, the, you know, I, I, you know, I've always respected sort of politicians before I was involved in it because, you know, they, uh, you know, they're in a, pos- a privileged position. But the problem is, I think the narrative now around politicians is that, you know, we're these bad people all out for ourselves. We're all rich. On a jolly. You know, yeah, we're yeah. all on a jolly. Yeah. It's like the taxman, isn't it? Everyone goes, oh, yeah. the taxman. <laughs> But, but the reality... What time's of, our limo coming? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, and actually, that's an interesting one. When I turn up to meetings sometimes or visits, people are say, oh, are you on your own? I say, yeah. yeah <laughs> they think, think you got an entourage yeah, I like Mike myself, Tyson, didn't they? Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, and, and, and you know, the, the, dis- the sad thing about that is that, you know, I do know that um, it does put people off. Without mm. doubt. And, and, and doubt. The, the, the worst thing for democracy, you know, whether I'm an MP in the future or not, it doesn't matter. But what you want is you want real people with real experiences and people who have had a life, people who have been mm. successful, people who have had all those different experiences is who want to come into politics. Yeah. Mm. I don't yeah. think you'll ever stop people wanting to be an MP, mm. but actually you want good people. Yeah. 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 So, do you get taught how to act and what to say in front? Any of trainers, public? MP? No, nothing. Nothing. So, uh, Not this even is like a... the honourable gentleman and all that. You just well, get... you get sort of told that that's the convention. The the, the joke is actually, I mean, and uh, when um, so when I wa- so I had never been to Parliament actually <clears> until. <throat> I was elected, mm. so I'd never done a tour of the House of Commons, right, yeah. never been anywhere near the chamber, so it was a brand new experience for me. And when I won, the neighbouring MP, Raymond Tristy for Gillingham and Raynham, said to, rang me in over the weekend because the election was on the Thursday and we were back in the House of Commons on the Monday. Mm. And he said, Kelly, I'll meet you at Portcullis House on Monday morning, so you, I'll, I'll show you the ropes. Oh. And it, it literally turned up at Portcullis House and uh, they gave us a pass. They gave me a, a laptop, <laughs> a locker key, <laughs> and that was it. it. Get on with it. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. And, and the, the first week was hell because, <clears throat> obviously, I people have been emailing me. Yeah over that weekend on this new parliament email address that I'd had. And, you know, I was in a panic mode, really. Mm. I've got all these people who need help or things to be dealt with. Mm. And, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. I, so what year was that, sorry? That was 2015. Right, okay. Yeah. okay. So, yeah. um, so literally overnight. So it was 15, overnight, we moved, which, moved house 15, didn't we? Did, we? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's 15, not 16. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 2015. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so it was sort of, you know, uh, you went and and... You know, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to do my best, and that's well, the panic. It's your first time you want to be the best <laughs> you can possibly that's be. That's it. So, so would you say that they maybe the Houses of Parliament need to do it? Obviously, not not a certain party, the actual mm. House, but yeah. some sort of training in induction. Yeah, I think I think you know it's so. Luckily for me, because I'd run my own business for seventeen years, I sort of you know I'm used to being a self-starter yeah, yeah i had some experience about how you employ people you know all, all of those sort of things so i was able to say right okay i can manage this but yeah. if if you hadn't been in that position yeah. you know you never had to deal with the recruitment process yeah. or um and just got thrown in the deep end really. yeah, exactly yeah. or set things up or you know think about things like you know we had to find constituency offices get insurance for that public liability insurance employers liability insurance yeah. you have to do all these things and, and you, it's yeah. literally like running <clears throat> a small a little business yeah, yeah. um mp's offices and um and yeah and the reality of it is you know you you do need a team uh unfortunately uh the you know the level of communication and things that come into an mp's office you just cannot physically no, do it no, on your own definitely not you can imagine yeah <laughs> so yeah but uh, you know it, it's fine um um and are you allowed to still run your old your old business <clears throat> so the way it works for mps is that you can have um you, you are allowed to do things it's quite legal at the moment they're, they're debating it at the moment right um you are allowed to have 
what people call second jobs. So, for example, you get a lot of people who are doctors or nurses who keep their hand in and, you know, people who may do bits and bobs of things. I personally, when I was elected, I'm, I don't actually work. I don't work in the business. Mm. So, you know, the whole idea of that was that, you know, if I was going to be an MP, I'd do it, do it full time. Yeah, so, right. okay. so, yeah, so I, I, it's not something I, um, <clears throat> so with that, business, so you no longer you, have your business. Yeah. Though. I was going to say, that's did what you I mean. give it to someone? No, 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 no. no. So I'm still, still a director. Um, right. So okay. it's still mine. Uh, but my father ran it, you know, I mean, right. and that's the joke, you know, dad said to me, you know, because having run my own business, um, it gave me the opportunity to be the member of parliament, really, because mm. I had time to campaign. Right, yeah. um, if I worked for someone else, it might have been hard yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the joke was with my poor old dad, um, he said, no, Kelly, you go off and do this by-election for six weeks. I'll, I'll run everything for six, for six weeks. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> six weeks turned into six months, <laughs> which turned into six years. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, but, you know, again, you can't do it without the support of your family. Yeah, no. And mum and dad, you know, again, they probably became more political once I had got elected. Right. Um, but, yeah, but they said, you know, I'm lucky. You know, I had parents that basically said, do it. Go you could yeah. you you know have a go. Oh, Doesn't matter so if you nice. fail. Just have a go. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's so nice that they have that support for you and they because obviously you don't you don't want to know their political views and stuff like that because they might not um, they will support you yeah, but yeah. they might not be conservative. Yeah, as such, but that's so. right. But I but I also think I was lucky because and and I and I say that and I, I became. I've developed my political views because I was lucky enough to grow in a household where you could basically have discussions and have differences of opinion. Mm. So I, you know, we talked about things as a family, but you could disagree and it was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where some families would tell you off. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel I'm, so mm. my parents are to blame, really, <laughs> because they sort of gave me that freedom i suppose to, um, say, to have the debates yeah. and have the yeah. difference of opinion and, wrong with yeah. that. and having the sort of your own thought mm. um, yeah. which i was like you know so there we go <laughs> oh no i like that i like no, that our daughter has her own faults yeah. She? yeah definitely and it's yeah. you know and, and and well yeah i mean because uh, um, if we ever say to her oh no, well but you're wrong put an argument towards us don't we and she says well actually I've done this this and this and I've said this and you're like oh, okay then yeah no, that's good no that's she great she try and change our minds sometimes she got everything she? at school at um, junior school she was everything <laughs> yeah. but she couldn't get school counsellor she, she couldn't no, get no no oh, um, no captain it was no, um, she got captain it was class it was counsellor no, it was. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah it was. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, sorry about her. Sorry. <laughs> no, I thought you were the one that she got in year <clears> six. Yeah, she got everything. Yeah, she got she everything, was captain, yeah. everything, but she could not, for the life of her, get school um, counselor. School counselor. Oh, yeah, our right. son who doesn't care. <laughs> he's, is, he's is counselor. He's one of those. Oh, like, yeah, okay, I'll do this if you want me so to. Or she yeah, got I a voice be... message. <laughs> yes, he's school counselor. Like, she couldn't believe it. She was so jealous. She was like, "That's the one thing I didn't get." Yeah. Oh, fabulous yeah no i mean and well and also it's quite funny because my my niece who's 13 now uh when um i first got involved she was only sort of four and you know it's she's sort of seen she's grown up with me being a, a member of parliament so to speak mm. and she and i and actually, she sees me as a female role model. Mm. Right. So she's quite independent. I mean, her her mother is uh, independent as well. You know, she's mm. another uh, force. But um, but but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been good for her to see, you know, another mm. you know, strong mum, yeah. strong auntie, mm. and yeah, uh, she's quite she's quite funny now at thirteen. <laughs> Like, yeah, I've, I've always instilled in Tilly that she's like oh when I grow up I want to do this I want to do that I want to get a nice car I said you work for it then I said don't let anyone else pay for it yeah. I said if you want these things you go out and get them and mm. you go and work and then it, it's that sense of achievement within right. you That's and right. I said you can do anything you want she's like yeah and yeah, she can, can. She's, and she's, she's so she's, intelligent yeah, it's unbelievable really no, it's, very, it's very exciting actually I think for young youngsters now yeah. mm. opportunities I think there are for you know in mm. some respects they're bigger opportunities mm. Mm. Absolutely. Right, so go on. going through obviously your journey, have you ever had you must obviously get a lot of abuse and a lot of negative <laughs> comments towards you? Can I jump in quickly, oh, right? I, 
we obviously this podcast only began a couple of months yeah. and, and it's doing all right. But they go, who are you going to get on? Who are you going to get on? I said, well, we've got um, MP Kelly Tolkers coming on. Like I've said this to a couple of, oh, have you? Will you tell her that someone <laughs> keeps nicking my bins? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you sick of people talking to you about bins, even though it's got absolutely nothing to do with you? Yeah, well, I'm glad you recognise that. Yeah, they think, yeah, they I think you're part yeah. of the council. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. think you work for the council. I don't ever remember seeing you pick up my bins and empty them. <laughs> no, no. You're welcome to, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite interesting. So I, I made a decision when I was first elected that no matter what people got in touch with me about, I would try and deal with it for them rather than pass them on. <laughs> so the consequence of that is I do deal with people who potentially have had their bins nicked. <laughs> and, you know, I will, um, yeah, basically, whether it's a small issue or a large issue, because quite frankly, people sometimes don't understand the difference between a counsellor Anna exactly. MP. Exactly. And, you know, they just know that they're a person that they can contact for help or support or whatever that is. You're a voice for them, basically. Yeah, a voice exactly. that will hopefully be listened to by the council. Yeah, mm -hmm. exa yeah, exactly. So it's sort of one of those things where I don't have any powers of um, direction or necessary influence over the council. But what I can do is ask questions and try and help them or try and get the council to take mm. a decision or try and you know raise the issue um so we do i deal with you know i will deal with any piece of casework that anyone comes yeah. to me with even if it is um sort of you know quite you know not 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 so serious you know mm. you know your bins is not as serious as someone who maybe got you know, not getting the support they need from the hospital, for mm. example, mm -hmm. or, you know, there's a legal issue or there's, um, you know, a financial issue yeah. or a housing issue, you know, there's it's so many things. It's quite funny because the last post I, I see of yours was um, talking about the roadworks. Oh, yeah. And I jumped on the bandwagon just like the bin man. Because <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned Arriva buses. I went talking about Arriva buses. Yeah. I said our daughter's not getting picked up. They keep leaving them stranded, the school kids stranded. Ended. and it was and i said <laughs> i don't well, know what i said i said something like that we're paying a certain amount of money yeah, a year yeah, and the yeah, bus yeah. just doesn't turn up with no notice hmm. it's yeah. happened twice this week yeah mm. that's mm. interesting well it is it's quite interesting so that particular issue with the traffic the only reason i found out about that was um i had a reaver in to and my office it, yeah. because i was sort of you know, raising some of the issues with mm. people on the peninsula with regards to one of the bus services yeah. oh, right. and in another part of the constituency. And they sort of said, well, you know, we, we we understand and we're sorry and we went through a load of things, but did you know that the council were going to shut the road for, for three months? And, and and that's how I found out. Mm. So, right. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I mean, a, lot that's of, a lot of the bus stuff is, is human error for us. There's been times when the boys' school, the boys' grammar school's been closed the girls grammar school has been open and yeah. the drivers look to see if there's a load of boys yeah. and gone straight past mm, with yeah. one girl just uh, stopped yeah. you know that's yeah. human error you, yeah. you can yeah. sort of understand yeah. but then there's times when there's just that number of bus just isn't there no mm. I know and when, and my, my niece has had <clears throat> challenges as well sort of coming from you know trying to get from sort of Chatham to yeah. home mm -hmm. um, but you know I, and that's the thing and so people do so what would happen in that so parents mm. do get in touch with me mm. and will say look you know uh, we're not happy with our daughter or son being left mm. you know and what my would my my immediate response will be is you know quite often I won't know what the intricacies are on all the bus routes of course. Mm. but what I do is I will write to a reaver and say you know this is what's happened mm. what's your response get a response from them see what they say mm. see whether we're going to take it further mm -hmm. in this case I actually got them into the office for a meeting because I'd had a number of issues that I wasn't necessarily satisfied with some of the responses yeah. I was getting mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um so it's easy oh, to sort from of Rachel have a few times as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um and you know, and, and particularly with school services and services for young people and you know, it is worrying for parents and the young people themselves yeah. because you know it's part of the day where you can't control where they are. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you're it a is. parent, it it's is. frightening. We've yeah, had a call from our daughter saying they haven't let me on the bus. There's a safety guy outside and he won't yeah. let me say the bus is too um, too, you know, full. Yeah. When her 
friend has got a seat for her, has kept a seat mm. for her. So yeah. they left and her so on the corner. Our 11 year old wow. has been yeah, left 11. in the dark. Yeah. She, yeah, because um, she was in year seven, yeah, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. So she in the was dark. 11. Her first year being left in the dark. Be, and know, it was raining. She wasn't late. And, she yeah, just yeah. happened to be beaten by the other kids. Going yeah, I mean, things like that, you know, people, yeah, do, you know, that's, I mean, a lot of people won't, mm -hmm. but, a lot. you know, that is stuff that I, I can't deal with issues unless I'm aware of them. No, of Absolutely. course. So that's course. why I always, you know, sometimes you know, <clears throat> won't necessarily be able to get a resolution to that. No, no, no. Raise the issue and no. make sure it doesn't happen yeah. again. Yeah. But um, but unless people are coming to me saying, you know, actually, this is happening really regularly, mm -hmm. I can't address no. it no, because I, I don't. No, but if I know about it. I will then try and address it. Actually. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, I think I and think the problem with us, then. the problem with us is you understand you can understand this happening, and they're going to have problems. They're not doing this on purpose. No, they're not doing this. But you're paying for a service. If we went to a wedding, films the ceremony, yeah. didn't bother filming the speeches, <laughs> and then filmed <laughs> the first dance. Yeah, they would expect a you know money taken away. Absolutely. You know, yeah. But you pay a bit. Um, a right, a Reva. A Reva. <laughs> a Reva. A Reva. Is it a Reva? They call a Reva, it. Yeah, you pay yeah. a Reva this amount of money, and there's no sort of I'm comeback. Sorry about this. There's no yeah. comeback for no, that. No, no, yeah. no. And it's I, not even yeah. when they were striking a few years ago, um, yeah. yeah, it must have been in year seven because Tilly just got on the bus by then, and there was um, the odd day. Sorry, here that we've and gone there. on buses. Sorry, <laughs> 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 because we obviously They're have. But it's important for a lot of people. It's just you know, that's it. It's the safety of our kids. Yeah, you know, she's gone from being a ten year old being walked to school and then two months later she's an 11 year old being stranded at a bus stop yeah 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 and she and and like um what was that oh, oh, sorry, sorry Rach. i forgot i forgot you think oh, she lost it yeah, yeah. Interrupt <laughs> I, I do it on purpose <laughs> now it's completely gone <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> thanks though right moving on so um are you, are you abused on the street? Um, so no is the Good. answer. So I have to say one of the, um, you know, uh, touch, touching wood really, I should touch wood. Chip wood. Yeah. Touch wood. So one of the things, so mm. I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, people are lovely Good. actually. Good. You know, people are brilliant and most people – even if they don't like you or disagree with you for whatever reasons are nice, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I always say, um, you know, I have had some issues mm. over the, over the years that I've been a member of parliament. Um, but in general, people are nice. Right. And, you know, as I say, even if they don't agree with you, people are generally just respectful, Good. pleasant, Good. you know, Do you get noticed. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I think it's because of my hair. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, yeah. People, people will, uh, you know, whether they like my hair or not, they've got a mane on you. Got a mane on you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but but yeah, and 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 you know that 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 sort of fine, you know. Um, but but yeah, I, I don't I I don't have you know I people don't tend to abuse you in the street. Mm. Um, they might do it on social media. Mm. Um, and via, you know, online forms. Um, and, you know, some of it's pretty, pretty nasty. And actually, you know, my it's my staff who have to sort of, you know, it gets to them as well. Mm. Um, but, and, and we've had some, you know, we've had some difficult, you know, I've had some, you know, we've had issues where we've had to get the police involved over the mm. last. So, you know, but I am, you know, I, I, I consider myself relatively lucky. Mm. Um uh yeah i think mm. with today's technology and with the rise of social media it's so much easier for someone to have an opinion on something something that you do something that you say and every part of that is criticized you know you can say yeah. one tiny thing and you're criticized 10 million times you know mm. it's ridiculous yeah. But it's their platform to have an opinion, really. So you yeah. can't ever stop yeah. that. No. But, but the source of their opinion is... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I and think... the way they do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, uh, quite often, you know, some of what, you know, look, I always say, you know, it doesn't matter. You can disagree with me on everything because mm. that is your right because we do still live in a democracy mm. where you can have differences of opinion mm. and you can share that. Mm. But it, but what I'm referring to is I'm not talking about people who are, you know, disagreeing with me on a mm. policy point. No. I'm talking about, you know, um, 
you know, the, 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 it's the nasty, it's the yeah. abuse, it's the sort it's of the rudeness, it's yeah. a personal yeah. attack, yeah. it's the vile language. You know, actually, you can have quite legitimately disagree with someone very mm. strongly yeah. without actually it descending into sort of but sometimes yeah. those sort of conversations are good like a good debate yeah, absolutely is really interesting and then you can actually go away and dissect it and say oh actually that point is good well this point is good and then come That's to a right. conclusion that way yeah. debate for debate you know mm. um sort of strengthens ideas mm. i mean that's the whole point of the house of commons yeah you know you go into a debate on a piece of legislation you listen to what other people are saying you have your views challenged you challenge other people's views and then hopefully the outcome of that is that you end up with a better piece of work yeah. because actually you've you've taken that advice yeah absolutely. there's a fine line between passion and anger as well you know and mm, i and yeah. i was very good at looking angry when i was actually feeling inside passionate but mm, expressing yeah, in an angry right. way you that's know right. what i mean yeah because you've just so, got all these ideas that you go oh i need to get all of this out yeah. but because you do it so quick and so please let me just finish yeah. you know it's just frustration <laughs> you know looks like anger sometimes mm, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, but, you know, as I say, MPs in general, um, you know, have had, um, I mean, it's it's quite normal for MPs to get death threats. Um, you know, it's quite, it's quite normal for MPs to have, um, you know, I mean, there's quite a lot, you, you know, and this is all political parties, mm. not just one yeah, or the yeah, other. Yeah. Some of it is quite frightening and, and worrying, and and um, and and unfortunately, I do put that down to the fact that the narrative about MPs, you know, look, there's 650 MPs in this country. You're going to get your good, your bad, and your ugly <laughs> because mm. that's what happens in any organisation where there's 650 mm. people. Mm. Unfortunately, with MPs, everything is in the public domain, yeah. mm. and you know, but we're not all bad people, and really, we want a strong democracy. We want MPs to express views mm. and be mm. different and be who they are. We w we need representatives to not be frightened. To say things or mm. express mm. views for fear of, um, you know, what may or may not happen to them. Yeah. And actually, it's not just us, it's our families. <clears throat> you know, my family's local. So, you know, my mum, my sister, my family see this stuff, mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. you know, and actually mm. it can be quite frightening for of them course. as well. Yeah. And actually yeah. my friends as well, you know, yeah. it's, um, but yeah, you know, but that's part of the job. And people say, oh, you it know, you, you, you put yourself there, you do it. You're right. I put myself in, and I'm always up for a debate. Yeah, mm. yeah. But you know, I do yeah. have to say that some of the, the aggression angry, is, yeah, you know, yeah, course. absolutely. Yeah. But I, I, I look at it as think and think if someone agrees with you 100, percent like if the country all agreed on one policy, something's gone wrong. You know, yeah, you need to have exactly that debate. Right. You need to have exactly that right. difference of opinion to actually prove your point. Almost, absolutely. don't you? That's right. And you know what? There's very little where everyone will work on, on virtually no issue people will have a homogenous yeah. opinion yeah. Right. literally you know that the, the, there's a nuance or a different way of looking at everything yeah um so you can't satisfy no. everyone no. or deliver everything that anyone we don't agree on anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's just marriage yeah. though <laughs> there was a time I, I've got a friend <laughs> I've got a number of friends who are videographers and I got called by a friend um to do a second shooter job he said am I available for a second shoot shooter job I can't remember the date I should remember the date but I can't uh in Westminster right. and I said I'm sorry I, I can't do it I'm, I'm already booked I'm gutted because he's a really close friend of mine right. and um, he got someone else to do it and it was the day of the um, that guy um, attacking you know coming onto the bridge with a car oh, crumbs, yeah. and killing the police got, policeman um, the and oh, the, yeah. the, the second shooter that took my job had to get on the ground he was yeah, that close oh to it all gosh, it all yeah, happening yeah, yeah. was you in parliament that day yeah i was and uh interestingly enough that day i had uh, a young person with me who um used well at the time she was a looked after child someone that i'd known since before i became an mp and she was doing work experience with me that week and it was horrendous because we got locked down and we were in um you know she was with her, her foster carers were sort of waiting for her to come home and she was doing work experience and we got locked down in Westminster Hall and um, we didn't really sort of understand what was going on at first really because but it, and it was crazy because we saw 
the response unit come through the House of Commons with their guns, their masks, mm. their helmets, oh and clear everyone out. Uh, they were searching the premises and sort of herded us into these areas within the House of Commons for yeah. quite a long time. Because they got rid of Theresa quite quick, didn't they? Because that's yeah. the footage you could see on the news. They, yeah. They that's managed because Theresa made So were you allowed stuff. your phones and sort of oh, yeah. having the updates and f knowing what was actually going yeah. on outside? Yeah, yeah, we could see what was going on outside via the um, phones and the yeah. internet, but we weren't mm. allowed in our offices. We weren't right. allowed in yeah. the chamber. Or oh, no, actually, the people who were stuck, who were in the chamber, got locked in the chamber. Right. Mm. So so it just basically went on lockdown mm. because I think at the time people were trying to work out, well, the authorities were trying to work out, was this an isolated incident yes. or was yeah. there more to come mm. or was there yeah. uh, more going on? And it was it was a really, really difficult and and and. Yeah. yeah, horrific. Because the horrific policeman horrific. lost his life, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. PC Keith uh, Barmy. Yeah, Keith, yeah, yeah. Keith Barmy. He's a Charlton Athletic supporter. Yeah. And they've still got his team, And what they've they? done at Charlton, I'm a Charlton fan. Oh, I used to be Charlton mascot for 10 yeah. years. And they've made one white seat. In all the mm. Reds, there's one white seat. And that's his. Which was his seat. And his family can use that. For yeah, the rest whenever. of for the rest of time. Yeah. So, yeah. but I yeah. I was um I wasn't involved. That sounds really wrong. But I was in an office above Allgate Allgate Station oh, when the seven yeah. seven bombings happened, oh, and crikey. it was that scary. It was yeah, that same well, situation where mm. someone comes in, tells you to get away from the windows. You don't know what's going no, on. You've got because right. I was on reception. You've got all these people phoning up saying, "Is my son okay?" Blah blah. And then yeah. you try and phone their desk, and they're not there. And you have to say to the parents, "I can't get hold of them." Yeah. And obviously, it was very limited mm. phone service. And it is it is horrendously scary. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it was scary. It was, and it's and it's really tragic and it you is. know, it's just a horrific, hor horrific time. Mm. And um, you know, and it just shows us that there is a real threat out there and you know, it's not just been in London and mm. Westminster, you know, we've seen it in different parts of Europe, which mm. you know, I think all uh democracies you know worried now particularly about certain different mm. sort of yeah. terrorist did it scare you personally on a personal level did you think did you feel safe is, or is it you know yeah. going back up there afterwards um, yeah no I, I i i do you know yes of course it was scary you know someone lost you know this was no joke someone mm. yeah. was murdered mm. you yeah. know that's basically and mm. um people were injured and it was horrific um but no i mean i think you know i you know i i know london mm. i know my home yeah you know, you you can't let those people stop you from being, you know, for, from being scared. But no, mm. I mean, I think you're always slightly aware of what's around you yeah. or what's going on around you mm. um, because, you know, potentially you are a target, not mm. because mm. of who you are, but because of what you are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it was, you know, that week was uh, one of the worst weeks and, and horrific for the people who had to deal with Oh, really, the wrong time for the problem. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't win that. No. I didn't think it was going to go. I did glance and think that's not going to go. And I, really, I really wanted to go with Kelly. <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't think I got that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, but but yeah. I, I mean, it was scary, but we just carried on. Mm -hmm. And I think there was definitely an overwhelming sense of everyone coming together and saying, you know, we are not going to allow these people to stop Absolutely. us from carrying out Good. our business yeah. and. Mm -hmm. And and obviously we haven't. Good, good. That's brilliant. Um, moving on to something else, we always want to know how, how much royal stuff you get involved in. <laughs> so have you been? To, look, I'm I'm guessing obviously the Queen's funeral you must have been invited to. Maybe not. Yeah. I, um, no, I didn't do. No, I had. It's quite interesting. So I, um, so with with the Queen, I met the Queen um, in two thousand and. 17, I've never I think. seen the Queen in my whole life. I've Isn't seen that her once, and yeah. that was at Royal Ascot, and she was about this big. Yeah, she's tiny. <laughs> so, um, so basically, there was the anniversary of the Royal Engineers right. being in uh, Chatham Barracks, right, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. and um, she was the Commander in Chief of the Royal Engineers. Okay. And so she made a visit to Brompton, I think mm. back in, I think I'm sure it was 2017. Mm. And because I was a member of parliament, 
I was lucky enough to meet her mm. and uh, and shake her hand along with the police, the mayor, mm. the um, Lord Lieutenant of Kent mm -hmm. and some other sort of local dignitaries mm. at the time, which was amazing. Did she chat to you? Uh, yeah. She, nice uh, hair, did she say? Oh, no. <laughs> no, the thing that I... I the recognize thing that, that yeah? I, <laughs> <laughs> For me, which, which sticks in my mind, is that she's incredibly smiley because I had sort of seen her on TV. And yeah, thought, she was always very straight I thought she was quite yeah, straight yeah, face, yeah. but actually she was incredibly smiley. Mm. And um, so it was re the, the interesting thing was, obviously you get told, you know, you've got you know curtsy and then you don't put your hand out she you you she mm, offers wait. her hand mm. yeah and obviously she wears gloves and um i remember so there's this little you know little lady who is our queen yeah uh puts her hand out to to me and i was expecting it to be a really sort of you know a, a, a sort of like a quite a, a, yeah. a, a week. week. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, she's been doing <laughs> it for a long time. <laughs> Queen. It was a really strong handshake. Really? Oh, oh yes. So, and I was really take. Uh, that's what really th threw yeah. me. Yeah. Because uh, you know, I just thought it would be where she's shaking people's hands all the time. It would be, you know, like sort a, of just a more of a hand <laughs> brush. Yeah. You know, yeah. As yeah. Of course. To a, a proper handshake. Yeah. But if anything, yeah. she's got the strongest handshake. Muscle, <laughs> well, she? that's right. But 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 I. It wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> and, um, yeah. you know, because obviously she was, you know, quite elderly at that time. So, yeah, that's what took that. That's what took me back, mm. how um, purposeful her handshake is. Mm. So there we oh. go. Oh. So you didn't. That, so, um, yeah. Did so, all the MPs get invited? To no. The... So we didn't get. So we didn't get invited to the funeral. So um, basically the there was only a few. There was only a few members of parliament that were involved in the actual official sort of a uh, funeral mm. uh, proceedings and uh, I did miss out because um, under under Boris in his last week I was made deputy chief whip right okay. and the whip's office play a massive role in those and it yeah. just changed, isn't it? Yeah. And it just changed. Just changed. So uh, my co uh, the guy, um, my friend Craig Whitaker, who MP took over from me, um, he actually walked. Uh, he he had a proper role within wow. uh, within the, yeah. within the funeral. But no, we wasn't meant to be. Yeah, we we um, watched it online, um, and <clears throat> we were able to obviously go and um, visit her yeah. coffin yeah. when mm. it was at laying in, laying in state in the, at the Westminster. Mm. And obviously, there are a number of events that we held within mm -hmm. within Westminster, um, sort of thought to mark it. But that was a that was a crazy day because um, actually, and the thing. So I think that I was the last minister to speak at the dispatch box in the House of Commons under um, Queen Elizabeth II's oh, right. government. Wow. Because I'll use that in a quiz. Yeah. So, uh, well, I think I w was the last uh, minister to speak because what happened was um, I was doing a debate, and all of us. I mean, there was pandem. I mean, we knew something was going on because we yeah. saw, you know, everything sort of mm. came alive. And and obviously, what we what we you know, obviously, when they made the announcement. It probably happened prior to that. Yeah, yeah it was around the five, six o'clock time, wasn't it? Yeah. I was at the Belfry at the time playing golf. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's yeah. Craig Whit um Oh, no, Craig Tracy, another one of my uh, friend in pieces. Anyway, we're okay. sure. <laughs> I'm going well. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going yeah that's when it was yeah. announced. While I was getting mm, yeah. ready, I finished a round of getting ready to go and mm. to eat. And mm. that's when it was announced. So it's around the yeah. five, six mm. o'clock time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it was really, it was, well, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, sort of, I never thought that. <laughs> Yeah, well, she's been in our lives, our whole lives. Wow, absolutely, and uh, yeah, it was a big, it was a 
big big shock you know i think everyone was genuinely genuinely you know sad yeah. Yeah. yeah oh without a doubt yeah. yeah and it was so well done the funeral was so well mm. done yeah. and it, i don't know if you watched the crown as well do you no i don't actually. right but they did a really good job at it mm. good tip yeah. of the hat to her as well mm. to yeah. be honest you know and i know there's some controversy around the crown and what they've done and what they've said but yeah. to her it was perfect yeah yeah and uh so yeah that was uh, you know um i'm i'm unbelievable really um, but yeah, so I only ever met the Queen once, and um, uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people never get to meet the Queen, so mm. I was so actually, it's you know, it's, it's I have a picture, you can't see my face, it's just me shaking her hand, <laughs> and but she's smiling, and I love you know, but you know, it's me because the hair, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, which you know, actually was wow, you know, yeah, never yeah. thought not I'd met meet the, king the Queen. Yet. Uh, yes, I have. Oh, have you? Uh, right. Yeah. If, yeah. So, when he was king or when he was prince? So I met him when he was prince. Yeah. Um, but also um, March 20, hang on, what year? Yeah, so March last year, I was made um, a privy councillor. Okay. So I'm one of the um, king's privy council. Right, so. Can you give us a bit more detail on that? Cause yeah. So, you know, ask me a mini and so I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so, so basically it's a really old old um tradition it goes mm. right back for you know uh, uh, it goes right back to i think sort of henry the eighth days okay. and um basically the king of the day y used to before we have this operation you yeah. would have your um you'd have a privy council of your councillors who would be your advisors mm. oh right okay oh, i was um, one of those right okay. yeah so when it was you know yeah. direct you know, oh, when, right. So you have an advi yeah, your advisor so, to the king. Well, but there's lots of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, don't you have to tell people that. Yeah. It doesn't sound good when you say that. Um, but it's it's really it's a, a really uh, a sort of a, a sort of a, a privilege to to, to be yeah. here, basically. So what happens now? The Privy Council today is more or less made up of cabinet members who of the government of the day. Okay. okay. Um, but there are a number of the people that are Privy Councillors. So you know, there's a number of opposition members. Mm. And but it's one of those things that you you once you're made a privy councillor, you're a privy councillor for life. Oh yeah. nice. Right. Oh brilliant. Do you get chosen for that or do you have to be so elected? So to? normally so the reason I was made Raffle. privy councillor. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so uh, what happens is if you're in the cabinet, yeah. in general you become a privy councillor. So you'll become a, a right honourable. Mm. Um I was made a privy councillor because the convention was Deputy Chief Whips become Privy Councillors. Okay. Oh. So that's how it was honoured mm. because I was a Deputy Chief Whip. So even though I wasn't attending Cabinet, it was convention that Deputy Chief Whips okay. become Privy Councillors. So that's why I was given the opportunity to do that, which was, you know, real, mm. you know, I'm really, really yeah. pleased. Well, um, I just keep thinking of films when you've got a king there and then you get someone that goes... <laughs> <laughs> to the king and then they go off with his head <laughs> but it's meant to be private and the king still has privy council meetings all of the time okay and but generally the ones that go to the every meetings the are the cabinet yeah, yeah. yeah and penny morden is the president of, okay. the, of the council uh, as the leader of the house of commons and um the king will or the queen then or you know there's a convention they're always held standing up so their meetings at Buckingham right. Palace with the people standing up rather yeah. than sat down. Right, okay. And there's sort of a, a ceremony that we have to go through when you become, when you get sworn into the council. Okay. Um, and uh, Is that like a day-long thing? or No, 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 no. It's only just a few, you know, just a, couple of minutes. at the beginning of a Privy Council meeting, um, which is meant to be secret. You're not meant to disclose anything that goes on at Privy Council. Oh. Uh, and that hence we've just had someone from the magic circle in yeah so yeah yeah, we, we, and, we, yeah. same thing <laughs> that's right and um but yeah <clears throat> i mean i for me uh, you know it's an immense privilege um because uh, yeah i mean Who uh, you know I, I and also you just sort of think crumbs you know i'm a I'm a, I'm a local girl from Strood, you know, I've and I've been able to, you know, and there I am. You know, it was I was sort of a bit taken back by it yeah, all because, you know, yeah. I'm going be. to Buckingham Palace and, and, you know, getting an opportunity to speak directly to the king. Yeah. You know, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I still, it's I'm amazing. still 
uh, things that, you know I don't take it for granted no, you, know. Doubt. you should be proud of yourself yeah. for being, being the so I was very you know so that's brilliant and uh, he's actually really a nice guy so when I met him um, he's got a great sense of humour he is really interested in what's going on mm. he's very engaged so he wants to ask questions mm. but he's got a sense of humour mm. and uh, so I'm a big I'm actually my yeah, I'm a fan of him. Yeah. I, since, mm. Having met him and, and sort of, because again, you only ever get told yeah. what, what you read in the media. Yeah, and then And then when uh, you meet. And they don't want to talk about anything nice, do they? They <laughs> want to talk about, you know, bad things. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, he, yeah, as I say, I'm a, a fan of him. Good. Yeah. And yeah. actually. I haven't got a problem with Charles personally. No, no. Not at all. And, and, I, and I would also say as well, um, <clears throat> You know, actually, I have huge respect. My respect for the royal family has increased since I've been a member of parliament because I have seen some of them at work mm. and I've been incredibly impressed by some of them. And I don't think we really understand the level of work that some of them mm. do mm. because it's not publicised. No. And <laughs> even with regards to um, uh, the uh, Princess Beatrice and Eugenie, I mean, I was at a, 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 um, a Queen's Walls function once and those two girls the way they engage with the businesses the way they engage with the, i mean they were fantastic yeah. mm. and i was mm. so impressed with them and you don't hear anything about and you those. never hear anything about mm. them but the way mm. i mean and they were genuinely interested <coughs> in the people they were talking to mm. and i was and, and it was really mm. nice to see yeah. so did you speak to them yeah but yeah. again normal young women yeah, yeah. who um you know fulfilling a duty incredibly yeah. respectful but it's uh, weird because they say that you know they're all privileged and all that but yeah. these people in my opinion yeah. are imprisoned yeah they are in a way they are aren't they you know yeah. they can't live their life like, we can just do anything we want mm. like, yeah. they can't they're imprisoned yeah. but, but they you know in a rich way obviously so hard though yeah. they literally they just their life 24 7 their life. yeah and they I mean, do, and and some of them do it incredibly mm. well. And, mm. and you know, you speak as you find. I mean, the one that uh, you know, Princess Anne. You know, when you see her at some of these functions where she just get up and she speak off script for a long time about these. You know, I mean, she's a, a, a superb as well. Mm. I mean, they're all. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, 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 as I say, having been a member of Parliament and seen some of that engagement on the outside, yeah. I've become even more. Um, respectful respectful mm. yeah. of, of what the royal family what do, do mm. yeah. and, and, and actually and they care you know it's it, mm. you know, the, yeah everyone everyone ha makes mistakes yeah. but 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 they take it seriously mm. 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 so royal weddings no 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 oh. <laughs> no, no oh. they're not on my speed dial Kel, William, <laughs> want to come to our wedding? Yeah, no, I haven't been to any royal weddings. Oh, um, okay. um, the only thing that I was very privileged <clears throat> and incredibly lucky to do was I was at the coronation. Oh, right. Okay. So I, yeah. yeah that's maybe what I see then. Yes, that's yeah, maybe what, what, what I see. I did a little bit of research and forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> well done, yeah. well done. So I, I, I'm really not that, I've never been that lucky before, but I literally, um, obviously, all MPs wanted to be able to be at the coronation. Well, actually, yeah. everyone wanted to be at the coronation yeah. and they had to limit the numbers. Okay. So there was a ballot for MPs um, and we had to submit into a ballot to get a to get a ticket yeah. and I was I won the fact you know I was one of the ones that right. wow. so it literally got a ticket was, in the it was, it was a lottery yeah. it was a lottery yeah. and um, it's the fairest way to do it yeah, yeah. so it was, it was it was yeah because there was only a limited number mm. of, of seats and uh, yeah so I mean oh, phenomenal really um, so just, was it just yourself but it was, yeah, yeah so you don't it was literally just individual tickets yeah and um, so when we we was we were sat in a, um, a part of, West, uh, of Westminster Abbey. So as you came into the Abbey, you had the, the nave and then uh, there was, so I was sat with the, the lords, mm. people who had got tickets and, and us uh, were sat together. Um, and that was all party. So mm. it was all mixed up as well. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. just the yeah. politicians. Well, like you say, you, you know, <laughs> politicians in that corner. Yeah, you know, different yeah. parties, but you, you work with these people. You know, yeah. in theory, they're, they're, they're workmates. Well, you're in, in, in yeah, in that's right. You know? yeah. um, and 
and yeah, so I mean, literally, I was just a guest, um, and uh, obviously, we saw all, everyone who walked through, um, and you know, we were very impressed with our Penny. I say our Penny, Penny Maud, and mm. she was just, you know, didn't she look? Oh, she oh, looks amazing, stunning. you know, uh, amazing, mm. and uh, that's the one with that lovely dress, isn't it? Oh, I love that dress yeah. and the colour. Didn't she design oh. it herself or something? Yeah, she did. So yeah. the Privy Council uniform. <clears throat> Is a male uniform, obviously. Yeah, yeah. and she and sort of sculpted it in a. She, yeah, it looks so cool. It's like something out of Star Wars. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And and it looked good. It looked mm-hmm. good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was rather than wearing sort of the the yeah. the, the yeah. male equivalent. Mm. It was it was really, right. Really good. Yeah, very good. So, how, what did you wear, and how long did it take you to pick something? <laughs> well, literally, I uh, yeah, I mean, I I literally there's a, a dress company that. I always buy my stuff online from and I saw something that I thought was so I bought that online and a great lady called Elaine Wilkinson over in Gillingham made my hair piece right um, she sort of works making sort of fascinators and hatinators and I have to get her in yeah, she come in. She, and yeah. she's great and <laughs> she just yeah she she did a wonderful job sort yeah. of um, you know making me like a I had a navy it was blue because um, you know, despite I'm wearing red today, no, no. <laughs> even though I'm, I do actually, actually, actually I do like blue and, and green. They're my colours, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so yeah, it was uh, turquoise blue with a navy blue, navy blue hat, mm. and shoes, right. and nice. stuff like that. So yeah, so nice. yeah. But I mean, it was a phenomenal day. It was brilliant, and you know, uh, um, you know, the program, the invitation. And I just think well, I've got my little things to pass on to my niece. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Us Brits do know yeah. how to knock out a ceremony, though, don't we? Oh, yeah. And everyone was watching it. And yeah. uh, and the sad thing actually was, if you were in, if you were there for the coronation, you missed all the oh, stuff going on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, I always say, actually, some of these things, you know, Only people watching watch on them. the TV yeah. would have had a great... Yeah. So was there like a celebration afterwards or was it sort of like he's crowned, you can go home now? Or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, apart from for the sort of, you know, the, the dignitaries yeah. and the foreign, you know, our, 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 our guests sort of as a country and senior senior members of government, mm. um, there was, a, but for the rest of us, it was, you know. Yeah. So you didn't have a role to play as far as no. catering for foreign, um, you know, No, rights. no. Um, so I was, uh, so I, yeah, so I was just a backbencher. So I wasn't a minister at that time. So um, there were, there were functions, mm. but that was only for the, you know, mm. senior the, you know the cabinet members yeah, yeah, and, you yeah. know, and, and stuff like ministers mm. so i was just um yeah i was part of the congregation right so and then actually you know all we did afterwards we went over because we had to go back to the house of commons afterwards i think some of us were just sort of you know the, there was no bar open or anything like that <laughs> but um we all just sort of sat there going oh my god you know we've yeah. just this been to the, yeah. we've yeah. just been to the coronation yeah. this is oh, phenomenal amazing, you know who would ever most of us well, don't the first get to one win. in 72 years isn't it? <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yeah so, that's yeah, brilliant phenomenal. so going back to obviously when you have to put bills across and you have to stand up in parliament do you get oh, you enjoy what you do clearly but do you get a little bit of a little bit nervous or a little bit sort of oh god I need to take a breath sort of thing or yeah I, th- I, th- I think you do I, I remember when I did my maiden speech the first time I spoke in parliament my leg kept shape I was standing up and my leg wouldn't stop doing oh. that oh, and it was all, and, and I just thought everybody could see my leg going no, like that yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah you sort of you, well it's like if you talk to actors or actresses you know they will always say oh you know they always feel even they before they do something there there's always yeah, a bit, bit there of has nerves. to be a little bit yeah, yeah and i think if you're not nervous then you're you're probably not going to do your best that's yeah. exactly what we say for weddings yeah. the day i'm not yeah. nervous about filming someone's special day yeah where i get one chance to film it is yeah. the day i'm going to stop yeah, yeah. You know? a- a- absolutely and i and i think it's probably probably the same and i think it depends as well you know are you going to say something controversial are you do you know what i mean yeah. are you going to are you going to get grief for it <laughs> you know who's going to be watching you know how the government are going to respond how your colleagues will respond mm. so i think there's a whole number of questions that go through your mind when you're sort of thinking about what you're going to say yeah um 
but yeah, of course, you sort of get apprehensive. I mean, mm. you, you know, because you care. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Have you ever been? Um, obviously, you've been in the, in the in the house when it's really kicked off between Labour and Conservatives, and even the others. Um, have you ever then finished to go out the back with the, the people that you've been around with and go, cool, that really hurt? That really, <laughs> that really did. Off to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you do, I mean, uh, again, quite <clears throat> often a lot of it in the, so for example, even when We're I We're only seeing the bad bits. Yeah, again. you do. I mean, and also there's sort of, even as a minister, so there's been times when I've had my opposite you Number. know the yeah, shadow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we've had a dust up in the chamber. Mm. And then it's and then you walk out the door and it's Bump into it's not it doesn't it, it tends not yeah. to carry on. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, you know, there might be some exceptions to the rules, but that's more down to them as individuals mm. than yeah. Yeah. the minister and the shadow as opposed of to course. Has anyone well, you probably wouldn't answer this anyway. But like, has there ever been a sort of you know, face to face out? Uh, it's carried on outside to the point where people have had to go hang about so you know no not that i've witnessed not that i've witnessed of course there's been arguments but you know between people on their own side Mm. yeah so Mm. but not that i've witnessed no Mm. i mean people are you know yes this is important stuff so people get sort of there's high emotion but yeah i mean you you need to be able to control yourself Mm. Mm. How, how often do you um liaise with like the prime minister yourself well, it depends, really. I mean, because you, 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 you tend to only sort of speak to him when you need to. Mm. Um, but we see him quite a lot. You know, he's around a lot. He's in the tea room. You know, here coming off to p He's in the tea and... room. It just does. Yeah. <laughs> Seems weird, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a little cat oh, on the apprentice. Right. Of course they've got to eat as well. But <laughs> yeah. just saying, like, he's just in the canteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty good at getting around to seeing people. Mm. And you can, if you need to talk to him, you generally will be able to. Right, OK. And and um, he has sort of how it works in Parliament is that he has something called a parliamentary private secretary, which is basically another MP mm. who is is sort of responsible for that engagement with members of Parliament. Okay. So you know, if you need, you if you need something, you, you sort of you sort of say, "Oh, Craig, almost like Craig Williams, he's his current PPS." Yeah. 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 And we say, Craig, I really need to talk to the Prime Minister about this. Or, mm. and, but, but so you get opportunities yeah, as well. Yeah. And we all have his number as well. So okay. we can... You can share that with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we, um, we come on a podcast. Yeah. And, 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 and I have to say, Rishi is pretty, you know, he's pretty communicate. You know, he's a good, mm. he's good at communicating and he's mm. pretty easy to get hold of. Oh, good. Good. If you need to. But, yeah. you know, you need I'm, to respect I'm sure the fact that he's a prime minister. Of yeah. course, yeah. So and I'm sure you've experienced some that are harder to get yeah, old Exactly. Because <laughs> you've been through, what, four or five? Yeah, yeah. So, David Cameron, Theresa May. Um, Boris. Boris, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, Liz. Liz, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember her name for some reason. It was so uh, quick. Yeah, yeah, five. Five. Yeah. five. Yeah. Blimey. Oh. Okay. Uh, which has been interesting. And uh, then, uh, obviously, David Cameron, the first Prime Minister I served under, mm. um, has come back as a Foreign yeah. Secretary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. But, uh, who was a very nice man. I was going to ask the question, I but say, I didn't know whether to. Did you, yeah. you know, get, get on the right of him? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you know, he obviously was the Prime Minister when I stood for election yeah. and he was very nice to me personally I, yeah. and um, he you know he was I always sort of I mean obviously debate what you can about the decisions he took as Prime Minister yeah. But, yeah. but as an individual uh, you know I had a great respect for him yeah yeah I, I, I like I liked him mm. I've got to be honest I liked him I'd lost a bit of respect for him where he left because of the decision yeah, yeah. Mm. you know he should, he should have stuck it out you know, yeah. just because he didn't get the decision that he wanted, yeah. you know. People, I but, think, were, <clears throat> I mean, you know, we, I think a lot of people were very sad. Um, I do think it would have been difficult for him to have continued. Maybe mm. he, he was fully uh, he on, have, the, yeah, on he, the stay, wasn't he? Yeah, he was fully but they, it, they would have made it difficult for him. Um, but, you, but, but, you know, it's yeah. uh, it's been uh, a roller coaster really over these years. Yes, uh, from that moment. From that yeah. moment, everything happened, didn't it? Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. So, so it was been, going to be hard for whoever was there. Yeah. You know. But, uh, it's been an interesting, <laughs> yes, yeah. interesting time. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Do you want to name your favourite out of the five? You don't have to. <laughs> no, 
Guys, you can't do that. No, actually, yeah, I don't really have a, No, not really. I mean, no, no, I'm not going to no. Oh, well, I'm going to say the current one. You've got to say the current one. You know, ultimately, though, it is like a, you know, it's a work environment. Mm, yeah. You know, they are the, you know, you will be happy with some of the things they do and say. Yeah, you will course. be unhappy with some and of the things you do and say. And unfortunately, that's his job. He's never going yeah. to please everyone, even his own And he's even not going to please party. his MPs. And, no. and, and no, none of them, none of them do and will. And, um, but again, you know, the beauty of it is if I've got a disagreement with what the Prime Minister says, you know, I deal with it in turn. You know, yeah. I, yeah. You know and we do. I yeah, mean, that's why you have the whips office. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, one of the functions when I was a whip, one of the functions of the whips office is to basically make sure you are the prime minister's eyes and ears and enforcers yeah. in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. You work mm. for the prime minister, and it's for you to be able, as a whip, to be able to pass on concerns of MPs. Mm deal with any issues that they may have, try and get those issues resolved. Um, and that's a function of the whip's office. Mm -hmm. So that he or her, whoever's the prime minister, understand what the parliamentary party are thinking about what they're doing and saying. Mm. Absolutely. Brilliant. But it, people forget sometimes that it is a job, don't they? They think it's just their way of life and they have to serve us as the general public. But they forget it's a job at the end of the day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a vocation. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. It's, I, I think it's, it's got a vocation. have a passion for it. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to say, right, enough is enough. You know, I've got to switch off, otherwise I'm going to have no personal life. I'm going to have, <laughs> have no... Have you ever switched off? That is, that, that is what... I mean, this is, the, this is the interesting thing I say. I've... I'm lucky. My friends, my friendship group are not politicians. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my mates, the people that I uh, my go to, they're, mm. they're normal people who've yeah, actually yeah. all been very, you know, good. And I'm very lucky. And mm. they've put up with a lot mm. because, you know, I've missed birthdays, weddings, um, holidays, mm. uh, trips. Um, you know, I don't see them because I can't get out of Parliament because you're yeah. in Parliament yeah. and you, 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 you have to be there. You yes, can't brilliant. just... Yeah. Sorry, Same guys, I've got to go. I've yeah. got a birthday yeah. party. <laughs> Imagine that. It's yeah. a massive debate. Oh, That's right. Just, gonna, just got to go. My mate's got a 21st. <laughs> That's it. So I, I, I'm, I always say I'm lucky. So my mates that I've still got yeah. after all this time, I know are my true mates because yeah. they basically put up with me being a really crap friend. <laughs> 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 oh, and they still sort of support me, so I'm lucky. <laughs> so can you see yourself doing it till, till you push that out? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever you know yeah I will and I would say yeah that's exactly it you yeah. know I will do it until I'm pushed out because yeah. you know for me it's been the greatest privilege of my life to represent the place I have literally been born and bred in and my family come from and you know I, I'm i not saying it because I'm the member of parliament but I you know I'm yes my uh, where we live has got faults but oh, yeah, i'm incredibly else. proud of where i come from i'm incredibly proud of this constituency and the people within it and you know i do want to, you know i'm glad it's me who has got who isn't you know where i can push for those things that i want for this area and other people want for this area so yeah i will you know, I I will have to be pushed out mm. because I want to be able to continue doing that and and being that voice uh, for for the area, because you know quite often, you know my you know if we're talking about things at a local level, of course you know on national different policies, but from a local standpoint, more often than not. I'm exactly in agreement with my constituents yeah. because yeah. I am one of the co constituents yeah, one, I, yeah. that yeah. I try and represent. Yeah. So, but yeah, so yeah, like you say, it has its out. faults, but there's some beautiful like Rochester High Street. I love Rochester High Street. Yeah. It's like going on holiday, just going down there. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. We've got yeah, some lovely places. It's just the history and the oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. But we, you know, where else can you drive past a thousand-year-old castle? Literally, yeah. drive past it, and it's that distance yeah. away from yeah. you. We do that on a school run. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And but. You know, but it's not just Rochester. You know, you've got up now. Yes. You've got. I mean, we've got. Um, you know, we've got internationally significant uh, bird breeding sites out on the peninsula. Mm. So some of our um, habitats out there are internationally important. Right. Do, do, do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we've got 
we've got a, a deep water port um, at Thamesport. We've got a river. We've got all this history. We've got you know Horning and Cuxton. Mm. You know, again, they're so so different to, to Rochester. And they're mm, the only course, the yeah. only other side of the river. Um, you know, we th- there's so much here. It's so diverse. We've got all the. I mean, the history is immense yeah. across mm. the med- is, Medway Town, and our industrial history as well as. Um, you know, but if you, I mean, if, I, I always say the classic thing, you know, when uh, at one point on the River Medway, we had something like 38 cement works. Wow. And one of the things I said mm. in my... Um, Blue circle was everywhere, wasn't it? I remember back yeah. then. Yeah. And, and so I always say to people, if you see a chalk cliff, that's a sign there was cement works. Yeah. Dug it all yeah. out. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And actually, one of the things I said in my maiden speech when I was first elected was that... Um, the um, concrete that went to rebuild San Francisco after the earthquake in the you know early part of the um, 20th century mm. came from the River Medway. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> so that's so, our little right. claim to fame. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and there's loads of things like right. that. You yeah. know, so for Francis Drake, all the way up the to Thames, sail. All, you know, paper mills as well. Yeah, paper that's mills right, everywhere. Because yeah. we took that's the why kids. I was in the paper mill industry. So because right, yeah. we took the kids down to Portsmouth, didn't we? Yeah. And we went on the Victory and everything yeah. like that. And there was a part of it built at Chatham. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we said, "Look, kids, this is where you're from." Oh my god, that's amazing. We didn't realise that. And it's little things like that. You can say, "Yes, that's where we're from." You know, absolutely. So uh, when we've got loads of that and there's loads of snippets of really interesting local history and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, Aveling and Porter in Strood, the the building, you know, which obviously was just where the Mm. Civic Centre part, Mm. you know, they made, you know, steamrollers, but they were the, 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 uh, what they made was shipped all over the world, yeah. they were the, one of the most important yeah. mm. engineer. And you know that was just one organisation mm. that mm. strewed because mm. we had um, lots of engineering in Strood at one time. Um, and yeah, so I mean, uh, just some of the things are just quite phenomenal. You know, uh, not in my constituency, but we're the home of the Jubilee Clip. You know, mm. <laughs> of course, yeah, mm. yeah um, I know. And I use Jubilee Clips all, all for a time. lot of time. And, and it's when you just go under the tunnel and you see it on the left, don't you? Exactly. Where the you Come we're, we're, you wouldn't even think it was from here and yeah. there, so there's so many so many things and yeah. and yeah i mean i just yeah it's uh yeah there's a lot of these towns i think we're very spoiled and we don't mm. realize we are until we actually sit down and say this is what we've got in this county yeah. we don't actually realize and no. we are very yeah. spoiled we take yeah. it for granted i think and, and that's right and you know there are things that need improving or there are things that go wrong um but we but it's so diverse i always say mm. my constituency is so diverse even though relatively it's a small geographical yeah. area mm. but we've got villages we've got towns um i know we've got pressures with house building and 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 pressures on our green spaces at the moment but you know, we've got some really lovely places to live here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we have. Absolutely. Brilliant. So, thank you so much for coming you. on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I've really this is enjoyed usually where it. I say, Was you nervous? But you ain't going to be nervous. <laughs> no, You've no. dealt with more uh, questions than this before. So, no, no, brilliant. No, really, no, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Really you. enjoyed it. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Oh, that's the other thing. The other thing we don't ever mention. It, um, <laughs> we don't ever mention. Well, we, should, we, we usually have businesses in. Oh, right. And we yeah. usually say, How do you, they get hold of you? But, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, do you want to do that? Yeah. That's right. This is going to be the worst state you've ever made (laughs) um so i mean basically you know people could telephone me or email me i've got website all they need to do is put my name into the uh, browser and my email address will pop up but basically my email is kelly.tolhurst dot mp at parliament dot uk and you know if you do have issues or you know, I deal with a lot of casework. I di- I try and help people as much as I can. So, uh, and I always say to people, get in touch because mm. lots of other people do get in touch with to with me um, about their problems, and I'm able to help them. So uh, that's what we're there for. What about sort of? Here we go. This is always happens, uh, right? We go. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, and then there's another ten minute conversation <laughs> afterwards. So what about not just problems like praises and everything like that as well? If someone's done something really good in the yes, community, yes, absolutely. Obviously, we're saying a lot of negative things like get in touch if you've got a problem. But what happens if someone's done something really good in the community? 
and they want to share that. Like, yeah, like absolutely. Like started a really good podcast or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Like, <laughs> I was thinking. I don't doing, know anyone. Yeah, <laughs> doing a charity walk. Wasn't a charity walk. <laughs> yeah, Rachel's got no. a charity walk she's doing for um, Demelza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, oh it's fabulous. To Peru to do the Inca Trail. Oh, wow. yeah, but don't you class that as a jolly? I class no, it as a jolly. It's not a jolly. When it's I've not got to be a jolly. No, it's really she, not. I mean, she's it's doing nice the Inca Trail. Do the Inca Trail. I mean, mm. that's going to be. She could do exactly the same distance around here, couldn't she? Yeah, but it's not quite the same, is it? <laughs> I don't know if you'll get. I don't know, I don't know if you'll get the sponsorship, sponsorship yes. <laughs> for just walking around strewn yeah. four times, you know, whatever. Um, but no, you're, you're you're right. Look, positive things, are, and people do mm. actually. So, uh, you know, people are good, and actually, people are asked my oh, we've got this person who's done this, that and the other. How can we help them? And, you know, so it's not all negative. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I mean, and also just flagging it because sometimes, you know, something's great, greats happen we can because we're we've got a platform we can give them recognition yeah um mention it in the house of commons you know something positive or you know share something so mm. yeah no positive stuff is great as oh, well yeah. good. <laughs> but people do contact me about positive stuff good. as well good that's what we yeah want. absolutely nice positive note to end it on <laughs> brilliant thank you very thank much, you so much. Nice. Uh, thanks for watching or listening i would give you the details but if you're watching or listening you know the details <laughs> So that's how good we are. Okay. That's why we don't get anyone on here. So, thanks very much. <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs Camper Van Hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. That's snugdubs.co.uk. This podcast was brought to you today by Austin's Eatery on Station Road, Strood. Try the Viking Challenge 